good stuff. Uh, excuse us, folks. We're having technical difficulties. <laughs> we had a we had a problem over in the so Toast in Discord bot. today where somehow all the roles got removed. Chuck doesn't know we're live yet. All the, all the roles got removed from all the supporters. I put them all back. If you haven't yes, gotten I your do. supporter icon back yet, either um, there is a problem where I can't correlate your name in YouTube or Patreon with your name in Toads. So just send me a private message. We'll get it all straightened out. No big deal. Appreciate all the support. That was a lot of fun putting you guys all back in there. But we are talking about and fed half waves and dipoles and how to deploy them because there's about a million ways you can deploy those things like shrimp but before we get started i want to introduce the one other member of coffee and ham radios who has his shit together tonight ape how are you doing i'm doing just fine and uh that was a little bit of a cluster with everybody getting pulled out of the supporters group and uh the one thing i'll say is that we still have to go back and go through the list of supporters for this channel right the yes coffee and ham. yeah so the easiest way is going to be hit one of us in our DMs, slide into the DMs, y'all, over in Discord, and hit then just, we can get Go you ahead added. And hit Jim. But tell, but tell us where your supporter, right. and tell us what your username is, because a lot of times, like the supporter name will be something, and that, like somebody right. will have, you know, they'll be like John Smith is the supporter name, but then on Discord they're like Buck Nasty, you know what I mean? And and <laughs> and, and I can't I can't make that distinction, so. Yeah. Today is APRS nice. Thursday, boys. How many of you boys participated in APRS Thursday? That's how they get you. Not me. Did you participate in, in WinLink Wednesday? No, didn't no. do that either. Missed, missed both of those. Tech Tuesday? <laughs> no. I, I'm running out of days here. Nope, none of those. None of those, none of those. So my favorite way oh. of hanging a dipole is throwing a rope in a tree and then hauling the center up. And then I use the step-in post that you get from your local tractor store. Jim wants Jim wants to be recognized. No. It, he's doing his calisthenics. <laughs> Jim bonked the green screen while I was frantically trying to unscrew windows right before the show and it was it was coming this, forward on me. I see this bead of sweat rolling down your forehead, Jim. A little bit of stress over there. No, I was like about thirty seconds away from just hanging up and going and smoking a cigarette and being done <laughs> with this guys, one tonight. I'm going home. That's right. Screw you guys. Well, you Taking were like, I can't hear. I can't home. hear. But you yeah, didn't have your earbuds in. Well, no, I do have my earbuds in, jerk wide. But did you then, though? Yes, I did, Chuck. Chuck, who can't type a sentence without making us all worried and starting to call 911. Oh, that's BS. Oh, man, you know, it's man he's cranky. Dang. Dang. He is cranky. He is cranky. No, I mean, I've had to listen. I've Listen, I've had to listen to Sparky. <laughs> For the last five or six days, bitching nonstop about how crappy Windows is. And I'm like, son, it is what wrong? it is. Go was buy a MacBook. Was, was I wrong? Yeah, why Shut up. Buy a MacBook. <laughs> Shut up. I have what, a MacBook. I'm trying buy? to get rid of it before it gets obsolete again. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, before uh, it gets obsolete second time. I'm this close to putting the Mac Pro back in production and sticking the Windows machine back there. Wait, wait. Who's bitching about Windows now? I'm not what? bitching. I'm just saying I'm going to make a swap. I, I was well, telling you I wasn't bitching either. I was just speaking truth. You chased off uh, N0 VTY. See you, bro. Adios. See you. Yep. See you, man. No bitching here. We're all just having a good time. <laughs> really? <laughs> he, yeah. likes, he likes Windows. So he That's how grown folks like to party. Oh, 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 speaking, speaking of this, Ryan, congratulations, man. You can come fix my boat anytime. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Congrats. Excellent. And uh, the traveling ham is here for the bitching. That's right. It's Jim, not go ahead. bitching. Jim, go ahead. I did not tell you, Ron, that I was proud to be using Windows again. <laughs> uh, I will say the audio interface management on it is kind of weird compared to Because there's six layers of it. You got to do audio interface management inside of StreamYard. You got to do it yeah. inside of Windows. Then you got to do it inside of Windows XP or well, the 95 problem, or 98. The or problem XP. tonight was not even specifically Windows. StreamYard decided that it couldn't talk to my camera or my microphone for whatever reason. Hey, and I'm like, I'm something. not not running anything else. I don't even know what that's about. And I'm not in the right audio on got my got side. I can, I can hear you guys in my ears, but I can't hear me. But you're so if I'm talking loud, you're loud, loud over there, Dan. yeah, you're a little loud. You are a little loud. Yes, because I can't hear you or me. That's okay. I can Just hear imagine. you. I can't hear me. Just imagine what you sound like. Like an angry imagine. old man. You yep, do. you got it right. Is that better? Spot on, spot on. Not too spot. hot for you anymore? Well, you're still hot for me. Easy. Oh. 
Easy. Not, hot. not hot to me, hot for me. There's a difference. I'm, I'm not hot for you either. <clears throat> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go again. So, Chuck, what's your favorite way of hanging a dipole? You know, I, I, I got tired of trees. And uh, I built my little stake, and I made those little donuts that go inside of it. And I just Chuck ain't stick, no tree hugger. I stick the uh, the stake in the ground, and it's pretty good. And I don't have to guy it or anything. So I should make those and, and offer them out there on car. But uh, the problem is, is the stakes exactly vary in sizes sometimes. Somehow I turned off the. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, they uh, they vary in size because the first ones I made didn't fit the ones I just bought. So, and it's probably just ones from Home Depot. They just probably change vendors. But I I like that. Uh, you so you use those things? Huh? Yeah, I use these guys here. These are oh, the the stronger for, ones. I use these for the for? the ends for the ends of the dipole or the oh. the ends of the end fed half wave. Or sometimes I just take the end fed half wave and string it straight along with like five or six of these guys holding it up about mm. three, four feet off the ground. Well, see, I like to mount dipoles from a mast, right? So I use put all the stress on the center the center point of the dipole. Mm. Uh, a lot of people take the ends and they pull them really tight between trees. So like I posted some pictures of some of the dipoles I built and folks will say, well, how do you, how do you deal with stress on the, on the center? Well, I almost always do some form of an inverted V. You don't really do a flat top dipole. Right. Um, and so as I pull them down, like I'll either take the ends and attach them to trees, to fence posts. Um, if I don't have something like that, I'll just use like a one gallon uh, milk jug filled with water or something like that, and just, and just set it on the ground with a long. That's, long that's now, do you I guys use, use, some, use yeah. something like bungee cords to keep the slack yes. out of the wire? <clears throat> yeah, I try to do that, and I use um. Actually, I buy this um, bungee cord material. It's made for kayaks, and I believe it's like a third of an inch or a quarter of an inch or something like that. Um, shock cord is what they call it. Yeah, that was the and, fancy word. I couldn't think of that. And, and, it, and it works great um, for just keeping everything more taut. And, and get, see, the problem is if you don't have any kind of stress relief like that inside your on your aerial, if the wind blows something that you're attached to, like your mast or your tree or something, one, like Shane can tell you, your radio is going to go flinging. But the other one is, is that you could, you, you could snap your your element, and uh, that's no fun. Now you've had you've had an end fed over your house, right, Ape? Mm -hmm. Do you have shock cord on that, or I do. So what okay. what I have is is that the end fed runs from a fence in the backyard the, where the un un is mounted up to the apex of the house, and where it runs over. At the end of the end fed, I've got about four feet of that shock cord and then i've got i don't know like 30 feet of um, bank line attached to that which comes over and attaches into a tree so as that tree moves that shock cord stretches back and forth and uh, gives me the stress relief that i need right yeah i have, I have shock cord tied to the uh well, i have shock cord and paracord tied to my tide bottles so yeah it's basically it's it. the same length every time right so Ape says that he uses a mast instead of a tree. Chuck doesn't like trees. I guess I'm I'm the only tree hugger here. Well, trees are fine. I mean, the thing is, is I had so much problems with my, my main antenna at home. I have a big eucalyptus, and I was able to get my antenna at 80 feet on one end. I, I used to do a sloper. It was 80 down to 40 feet, but I got tired of it breaking all the time because eucalyptus are terrible for breaking all the time. So Right. And you get, and you just a lot of times when you use trees, man, you get stuff hung up in the trees. Right. Yep. You sure do. So with so, that, go ahead, well, my, well, my question is with your diagram up there, right? So, how badly does it impact the performance if the ends of that dipole are five feet off the ground or four feet off the ground it or whatever? Be those? Like six, about six feet off the ground. It it would be better if this was a flat top for sure. Or flat. Okay. I mean, it's still going to dipole. Would be the, it's just the best. Gonna, Dipole better that way. Oh, you know what though? Uh, what was I? I was reading the other day. I think when it's an inverted V, you actually get more gain. You get more directionality. I'm sorry, you get less directionality with an inverted V. It becomes more omnidirectional. The like nulls vertical. are better, or something though. There was something about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so your your takeoff angle changes a little bit, also. Not not yeah. much, but a little bit. I mean, so if it's if it's a flat top dipole, it's going to go you know straight up, and if it's 
slope down like this, it's going to go out to the side. And I, this is not really a fair drawing. Let me do one more thing real quick for this. It's going to be more V-shaped of, oh, of an output here. And this is how you get those two donuts that you see all the time on Cal's channel. Now, that's coming off the sides of the dipole or the... Uh... It's, it's a 3D... 3D or, donut or type of shape. So it's all around the actual wire itself. Yeah, yeah. The, you don't you don't get as much gain. Actually, your gain's really low off of the tips of the of the wire. So right. if, if you turn this 90 degrees and look down, it's it's going it's going to look like an infinity sign. Infinity. Um, it's the way it's going the way it's going to radiate. Uh, the, the thing is, for me, using a center point means I just have to get one thing up in the air high right. versus mm -hmm. versus two, but and even right. potentially three. Um, that makes right. it a really easy to do a temporary type installation. Even at my house, because of the HOA Nazis, I am probably gonna, we're probably going to get banned for saying oh, Nazis. Man. But uh, the HOA Nazis, they, what they do is they, I, I, I put an antenna up and I'll take it down after a few days, except for my permanent and fed halfway. Um, and then you're so allowed, it's just easier. You're allowed for to me keep to, it up all the time, or not? They just you can't see it. Karen you can't just see can't it. see it. Hollywood has a very good point. He says this would be great if we used M M A N A dash G A L, which it would be great, but I'm I'm not that talented. Yeah, I, I, I would. Played, we, I played with it once, and this didn't go very well. Yeah, Surprise. I'll uh, you gotta, fire it you up and see what I, I'll see what I can find. Um, give me a second. So I'm gonna make make this really big fat thing here, our imaginary coax for an end fed half wave. There isn't any reason why you can't feed it at the end here, and then have it go up in this same pattern, the same shape. Mm -hmm into a tree you just raise the center of it up higher because what i have been told is that is where the the most of the signal comes off of the end fed half wave that's what i hear also really and then for a dipole you feed it in the center i, ne I never set my end fed half wave up that way but i've been told that that is the better way to do it well you get more yeah like you said the center gets more power out and then also, there's no reason why you can't do an end-fed half wave like this, fed into the tree, with the high end in the tree. Mm -hmm. and yeah, now that's I've, that that's how I've done. Other end up there, which right. I don't understand. But I had a, um, a people tripod, put the coax up there. Yep, the aluminum tripod from I think uh, Giga Parts, and I used it, and I put the uh, the feed point on the end of the tripod, and then slung the wire up over a tree limb so my my end the feed end was about five feet off the ground and then the the end of the wire was i don't know 30 feet 35 maybe eric is behind the scenes helping us out in the toads discord coffee and ham radios channel there is toads discord linked at the top of the chat over there if you're not a member i don't know why you're not a member why? um because you it's free out today i didn't kick nobody out but uh, go over there and take a look, and you can see the the donuts we were talking about. Is so, choke considered high end or end of wire on sloper? The choke is usually where you convert from antenna to coax. And if you want to talk smoke and ape <clears> style, <throat> some of your coax might be a counterpoise if you don't do that. So you might want to put it halfway down your coax. Yeah, and so the thing is, um, just to talk about that real quick, what they recommend is to keep your unknown close to the ground so it, it interacts with the earth matter. Um, if you have the ability to do that, that's what I would suggest. You do keep the unknown about three feet off the ground, and you may need to mess with that. But I used to have an end fed that ran out of a second story window, and the unknown was in the window, and then the antenna ran down towards the ground. So, what we like to say here is work with what you got and where you got. And if, exactly. if you can only get it up in the air, then do that but if you can get it closer to the ground you can also on those infant half waves if you're if your uh, swr is a little weird just try different heights sometimes it don't make a decent difference well that was that was my question chuck so on the car apollo do i hmm. want to feed that from the ground level or do i want to raise up the 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 winder and the coil and all that I have never raised it. I know was it Chameleon says to do that on one of theirs, but well, to I, me it's I don't know. To, to me, I use, I'm usually using a pole, and I don't want to put the weight up there God. if I don't have to. <laughs> the so, God. so I don't think that Canva, being the professional design tool that it is, I don't think that it has a toroidal choke, one to one choke balance on un design 
in there. So I put down a, a choking hand <laughs> to, to choke out halfway down the coax, and then the other half of the coax runs into your shack. So that's what I was trying to describe. If you don't have a, a fancy smoke and ape counterpoise going on, then you need to have some type of choke on your coax. Otherwise, your antenna, your radio will be unhappy. So you need to have that counterpoise going off in some direction. Yeah, and Randall's right too. On the uh, you don't want. I'm the too. I'm too high poor for video, down. John. I'm going to try to add something to stream. I don't know if it's going to work because it does not look like it's going to. Yeah, it looks plain white to me. Hmm. Plain white. Uh, looks nothing now. What are you trying to add? It's um, MMA GAL, um, and, ha and I have a 3D far field plot of a of a. Uh, Dipole, but it doesn't look like it's going to do it. I don't know Can why. you get a screenshot of it? Uh, well, I can't. I, I want to try again because if I get a screenshot, then I can't twist it around and all that. It's in 3D. Oh, oh, you want to do the fancy. And he's only got one monitor because he's a cheap old man. Right? I mean, even Chuck a, has... Look at that smile on his face. Even Chuck has three. Well, I'm only up to two right now, but... You've got a third one potentially standing right. Yes, yeah, standing by. It's up there, up way up there. Well, I, the, and the reason I asked about where to put the the feed point of the NFED is I had heard somewhere, and may, maybe from one of you guys, that for our antenna or any NFED, you want the feed point as close to the ground as possible. That's where I usually have it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, is that a, is that a thing that's better performance that way kind of deal uh, yes is, is is what i'll okay. say okay okay i've somebody's been coming here on the ground God, before well so if you're doing a sloper configuration and you put the feed point on the ground or you put the feed point in the air it don't make no difference because maximum radiation comes off the center of the wire regardless okay there's there's Three hands you know, we here. Missed, I got. We missed. No, we, uh, we have missed a whole bunch of super chats. Yeah, at least one. I saw one. I well, ain't that's, complaining, but that's did we see more than two now? No, there's two. There's two. Oh, now. I like it. So apologies for missing them. Um, yeah. Hold on. Let me get some music the first, going. The first one was Richie's radio room. That didn't show up on my stream yard. Oh, it didn't. Yeah, no. Boy. It was Are you a seeing it? Color too. Are you Maybe seeing it in YouTube chat? Thing. I don't know. <clears throat> yes. No, I saw it in Streamyard. TJS had a super chat, and Richie's. I radio think that's room. it. Yeah, Richie's radio more. room. Thank you Richie's very much. Richie's radio room did a super yes, sticker. Thank you. Oh, no, that's why we didn't say, "Hey, Richie, thank you." Are we, we're gonna we're gonna dance for that one too, right? Yeah, I can't highlight it. Yeah. If one of y'all can highlight it, I got it. That's not the highlight. I can't. Oh, look at you folding paper. Right. Paying off. Well, I mean, he has meetings on dollar, the golf dollar, course and stuff. Dollar bill, right? y'all. Dollar, dollar. You know, so he is obviously a player. Just yeah, so I was, uh, had a meeting yesterday at the golf course. Well, he was asking about, he actually had a question in there, the direction of that counterpoise, and that can make it directional. Um, and if it's elevated, it definitely will make it directional. What I try to do is I'd like to keep it um, in the same direction, like parallel, I guess is the way to say it, so to... Yeah, off like center that. fed. Yeah, pretty much. Um, is is like how I how I prefer to do it. But again, if I'm at the corner of the fence or something like that, and I got to run it mm -hmm. at a ninety degree, or I got to run it underneath of it, then that, then that's what I'm going to do. I do not know why this isn't sharing. It's kind of driving me a little bit bonkers. Oh geez, my alarm's going off on my phone. Talk amongst yourselves. So we've all had technical issues tonight, huh? That's awesome. Yeah. I tried. I tried to share. I made a contact with um, KMRD the other night when I was on the the night of the uh, that I, I did the antenna thing with the uh, the clubhouse, and I could not get that to come up for some reason. So real quick, y'all need to give a big shout out to my friend Joe Brett. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Joe! Happy Joe. birthday! Oh yeah! Hey, happy birthday, Joseph! Um, He's I guess only we'll 29. Say, uh, he needs some milk. He needs some milk. He probably do. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Keep the bone I'm strong. Gonna, I'm going so to gonna do, do a, a process kill on my MMA, whatever it is, and see if that oh. uh, restarted. The, Are the you running Windows? Uh, unfortunately, I am. Yeah. So, Tio, how do you get your 
antenna into the tree. Are you using a throw bag or what? Yeah. Sparky's got, he's got a real nice throw bag <laughs> set. Got to lead him around, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have the, the... the Weaver throw bag. And this little tiny bag. football turns into a box when you open it up. I'm and it's a convenient it fanny pouch, too, Chuck. But I'm not going to close yeah. it on camera. Maybe I will. I don't know. And I, I've, I've watched guys, I've seen guys tell you to roll it up and put it in there. You don't roll it up. You no. just stuff it. Just stuff it in there. Just like and you do your ropes for climbing and stuff like that. You stuff it. So you it tie get... one end into the loop that's on the inside of the box here. That way so your box it, goes in the tree too. So that way it never... Um, the, the problem, the reason why your lines get, tie, get tied up in knots is because the two ends cross over each other. If the two mm -hmm. ends can never cross over each other, no matter how scraggly it is in there, it's going to be really hard for it to tie right. itself in a knot. Yeah. And then you get one of these weights. And there's some magic trick that you do where you pull it over. Magic trick. I don't know how to do it, though. If you go through the hole, I don't know. I, so I literally I wish... don't know how to do this trick. I, I wish I was a little closer to uh, Joe Brown. I'd give him a a, 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 a CD that is uh, UB40. Oh, to use that nice. as your as your sling, Steve. To sling it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, you, I I do the throw it backwards. That's too, what right? I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no telling where it's gonna go. Well, now see, I learned I've learned one thing about that. I used to do it kind of over overhand kind of deal. No, it's this I get way. it in a vertical circle now, so I've got a pretty good idea. It's gonna go up uh, at least and not into my yeah. nuts. So right. that's you know but the other Those, way you, you there's this two-handed method that you can cradle uh -huh. it back and forth i i haven't mastered it yet the tree guys uh, between your legs yep oh see that mm. Mm. So i am backwards. an amateur oh right see that? holy moly too chris close to things chris thank, thank you. you chris wow he Ooh, likes granny style. Much I, I got, you got it, Ape? You want me to get I it? it? Okay, hit it. We, we, need, we, need it done, we need it done correctly, so just give me one second. And oh, snap. <laughs> Chris, that's awesome. Thank you. He Thank says you, granny style, which I think is what, we, what I was talking about. This might be what yeah. he's talking about. There used to be a really good basketball player that, you know, everybody shoots like this for free throws. But Rick Barry led everybody for years, and he did granny yep. style. Yep, I remember that. Oh, Ricky Barry. Rick Barry. Ricky the Barry. Warriors, the San Francisco Warriors, I think, at the time. Which they are again, I think, kind of. I don't know. So Eric sent them in Discord, and John sent them in email. So we're getting this really mm. strong signal that you all want to see mm. donuts. So get them up there. Oh, so there yeah. is a donut. Mm -hmm. And this is the radiation pattern of an inverted V dipole. Yeah, that's really that's a, that's a, that's a pretty good depiction. And if you take a look at that, it looks more like a kidney bean, I guess is the right way to say yeah. that. Yeah. As opposed to like a segmented ant or something like that that you would see you in a... When a when a uh, when a dipole, um, wow, Cascadia is here. Hey, on that x-axis, jelly, you would see a more of a pinch uh, with it with a traditional dipole. Dipole. I'm hearing I'm myself, hearing myself echo. echo. You are. Well, you are James. 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 You are. You are. You are. All right, I'm muted. James, hello, hello. problem's gone. Oh, problem's Abe's gone. got it. Boom! Oh, look at that one. Look so at that. I, I can't screenshots. I can't twist it or any. Yeah, it's a screenshot. Oh. But but this is a um, a dipole mounted in uh, above ground, uh, real ground, and so what you can see those lower lobes are the takeoff angles where you have the most gain, and uh, when that goes up and it hits the ionosphere, it's going to hit it at an obtuse angle, uh, and then it's going to refract down, um, at a further distance than it, than the ones at the top lobe. So the top lobe is coming off at a steeper angle, so that's going to be more of an acute angle when it hits the ionosphere. Mm -hmm. So that is the uh, the dipole in free space. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do an end fed, and we'll come back and take a look. And what you'll notice is an end fed mounted horizontally nice. or in an inverted V is extremely similar. So just give me one second here. Let me stop this and see if I can get another one. I get that reference. Just stop it, man. Just stop it. Are you allowed jelly donuts, private pile? Is chow allowed in the barracks, private pile? And why not, private pile? Did yep. Jim freeze? Yeah, he's, know, he's, he's working hard. He's animated. He's, his eyes blink, right. though. Um, that's, that's his resting uh, concentration face. That's awesome. 
Did you get rid of the echo? I don't know. We can try. Let's try. Hey, Jim, oh, how's yeah. the echo? How's the echo? Nope, it's, still it's still there. there. <laughs> is it still, 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 still what's still going on over there? there. Yeah, it is. It's I'm like I'm playing cards with my brother's kids. It's a good thing he's an IT guy. <laughs> I, I suspect he's going to be extra salty when he comes back now. What's uh, He's got his face off the screen right now because it's bright oh, red. I was trying to figure out what was going wrong there because... His, right, it's uh, redder than a baboon his tail. His lockers are in front of his head. So this is a just this is that same dipole, and this is a a vertical and a horizontal depiction. Is it what the hand they call it vertical and horizontal? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, if you're looking mm -hmm. down at it on the left hand side, so that's where you can see where I was talking about. It's a little bit more pinched along that y axis, because that is the ends of your dipole, and you have a, more of a null there. So if you take a look at it, it's like negative twenty dB down from the ends or the sides mm -hmm. of the dipole. Oh, yeah. And then on the right, what you see is a depiction is if you were looking at the dipole from far away and they just sliced it right down and you can see how the, the, instead of coming off like a big donut, like you would see an isotropic radiator or a dipole in free space. I mean, um, it looks like somebody put their finger on top of it and smooshed it down a little bit. And smooshed. what you get is you get stronger radiation patterns out and that improves your transmission as well as your receive. So that gain works bi-directionally. So let me get it in free space, and you'll see the donut that I'm talking about. Give me one second. Do we have some of that, like, flashback music we Daniel, can play? Daniel wants to see it in the infit half wave, too. Right. Because okay. the flashback to when I was a young ham, when I was a new ham, I actually I'd heard the term inverted V before, but I didn't – it's still there, Jim. But I didn't know what the problem – what the what that actually meant – to install it and that that thing that i showed you in the tree where it looks like an upside down v i that finally connected when i actually put it up in the air i had a cheap you know gas station flagpole and i just ran it up the metal flagpole and did the mm -hmm. thing and hey it works get it up in the air that's the most important part don't try to just get it up whoa what's that so that's a dipole your neighbors. in free space so that's without the impact of ground so that tells you how important your grounding is. And that's why I'm always hemming and hauling about radials and counterpoison and ground planes and all that kind of stuff. And also the height of your antenna. Mm -hmm. and, and what you have here is you have a more omni, not an omnidirectional, but you have a more circular pattern there. If you smoosh it down from the top, like I was talking about, you'll get much, much stronger gain in those main lobes that we were looking at. All right, let me see if I can, uh, if I can find an NFED uh, half wave. So keep them entertained. Ready to dance some more? Yeah, so... Um, no? No. What other ways okay. can we get... Uh, painter's poles work, if you guys are looking for something, if you can get one. I mean, I, I've gotten out at 10 feet before, so... Yeah, no I've had no problem. I've gotten half the U.S. with a uh, antenna three feet off the ground. I mean, they call it Nevis because it does get you more nearby contacts, but it doesn't stop you from getting contacts farther away. And this was on voice at 20 watts with a G90. And right. my witness is uh, KD9OLN, Carlos. So you know that I am 100% accurate. So what we have here is a NFED uh, dipole. And you can see it comes up and it goes across. And then what this blue line represents is the, um, the, the, the voltage across or your wave across that wire. Mm. So let me, let me pull up the 3D plot now. So just give me one second. All right, Jim's back with no echo. No echo. IT to the rescue. I don't know if I have any audio, but whatever. You do have audio. It's a little hot, though. It is a bit hot. Oh my God, you guys. It's, it's just volume. <laughs> Maybe it was you just talking loud. You're ex you sounded excited. I'm always excited. Activated. Or maybe it wasn't excited. Maybe it was not happy. I don't know. I get to hang out with a smoking ape. Chuck and T.O. I mean, this is the freaking highlight of my of your evening. Yeah, and then I get abused by the same people. So it's <laughs> F and G, man. Only those that love you abuse you, man. And if you don't well, know what true. F and G means, y'all, it means that's not true. I guess freaking new guy. So, but here is the uh, N fed, and this is mounted <clears throat> horizontally. We just took a look at, and you can see that you have less of that. Uh, Radiation coming out of it and going up, and it's more coming off of the off the sides of that Y axis of the. Of Look at the this. There's one in every chat. Jim was gone. Now you got to pick on me, Don. I'm not. I'm not saying it replaces physics. I'm just saying it does indeed work. 
What's that? I didn't. I didn't. I was missed the debate. Not, he was yeah. making fun of my Nevis that got halfway across the country. Nevis. Well, the thing is, is that when you have a Nevis antenna, it does concentrate energy up, but you still have energy going in all directions, right? And so that's where, like, I had a buddy that had a had an antenna that went out around his fence, and it was like eight feet off the ground, and it was like a U. It wasn't even eight feet; it's probably like six feet. And I remember looking at it and being like, "Bro, that's gonna suck. That's gonna be terrible." And he like shows me his his PSK reporter stuff. And I'm like, well, damn. I was like, I would just keep, if you're having fun with it, keep playing with you it. You ate your words, huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Deep well, I mean, things. think about going out to do a parks on the air activation. You can't, you can't put things on the ground. You, some, some parks, you can't put holes in the ground. Some parks, you can't put things in the trees. Right. So tie it to two picnic tables and don't sweat it. Get your park activated. Have fun. That's what hey, it's about. Don't hurt those well, picnic not, tables, man. Wouldn't that be a good place where something like a, a carbon fiber mast or, or not a mast, a, a tripod. You're just, you're just stirring the pot, aren't you? I did that on purpose because Don's in the chat and he's picking on you for a minute. So I'm like totally cool with that. And Don and I are brothers of the flex and you guys are not. So The brothers of the flex. Right. Use a kite. I want to do a kite antenna so bad. That would be so cool. But I don't think I want to die yet for this hobby. So you could use something like a tripod. And when I, when I got my first HF antenna, the tripod I bought is not—it's not like a photo antenna. It's or a photo tripod. It's for antennas. And I'll see if I can find it. It's—I got it from Giga Parts, and it's, it's goes up to about thirty feet, twenty feet, twenty-five, somewhere in there, twenty, twenty-five. So a couple of those would be great because then you don't have to stick anything in the ground. Ape Jason stock or diet or anything like that. Just saying, hamsticks. Jason's probably got it there. Hamsticks will work too. Ain't nothing yeah, better than a know. hamstick eye pole. Um, Carbon fiber hamsticks. Look at those. Uh, Dave Castler just did a video on hamsticks the other day. And I was like, oh, my uh -oh. God, a hamstick talking. They work. Randall. <laughs> if you can get yeah, your... I mean, look, if the hamstick's what you got, then go with it, right? Badass. That's right. Hey, is, is Stan... Did Stan pass? Stan Jablisco? Yeah, he did. Is he who is that guy? I don't know who that... He's a I'm pretty eclectic dude. Yeah, he's yeah. like owner and proprietor, and his call sign owner and proprietor. He's um really really gifted ham, and he explains like antenna design theory and electronics theory at a really he draws really high it level. Out. He's fantastic okay. videos. I mean, his personality is a little. I mean, the, the guy the guy was in the in, probably in the chess club and the physics club and the astronomy club, right? Um, so you a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people won't watch him because of that. But he also has some books published, and I've got a few of them. Awesome. Yeah. I think somebody – we just used to know this guy that was trying to copy and doing the drawing stuff, you know. He copies <laughs> a lot of people. This would be he an draws inverted V dipole, Ooh. and then you can see this is more like egg-shaped, but it becomes Power more omnidirectional. everywhere. Yeah, more omnidirectional, like a vertical. So your gain in any one direction is not as strong as with a dipole, but the, the thing is, is that you get you get directionality in all directions, which is mm -hmm. it's a compromise I'm willing to make. I like it, and the thing is, is that um, you know it's, they're easy to get up because they only require one one mount point. And and John is John is spot on, um, you know, he, and he has a lot. Stan has has a lot of videos still on his YouTube channel that are not ham radio related. That are more like physics and stuff like that. Oh, it does but, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. I watched a bunch of his videos when I started, man. Yeah, him no, and he's Dave. Him and Dave. Um, oh, what's that other guy's name? He built a lot of antennas. Um, I, think I know who you're talking about. He does like the, the soda can antennas and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. He did a lot so of the, Kevin's... Uh, hex beam, or the hex, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, cubicle quad stuff. A lot of that stuff with PVC and stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, so Kevin's asking about a tethered balloon, and a tethered balloon would be awesome. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me the other day to get one of the old Cantronics KPC-3s or whatever they are. They're, they actually run off of a 9-volt battery. Stick that underneath of a balloon, send it up in the air, and then you can do digital communications over APRS with a very wide area because you have mm -hmm. your, your digipeter in the sky. I did that. Um, brain, right? Actually, I have it in, in one of my videos. It's called... Uh, Vacation Ham Radio is the name of the video. And I took a big kite and I let it out probably about 30 or 40 feet. And then I put a barrel swivel on there and I connected a um, 
J pole antenna from Ed Fong because they're really skinny and light. And I'll let that get up there probably around 25, 30 feet. And then, um, you know, started to hold my HT like this because the coax was running out and uh, was able to do some talking on it. It, it. And it's fun, you know, do stuff like that. But you do run the entanglement. You know, you get everything all twisted and tangled up there if you're, if you're not careful. Jim, you're and, muted. Dude, why'd you tell him? And anyhow, here oh, is the... Uh, <laughs> this is a vertical. And so as you can see, it has a lower takeoff angle there. That's oh, the, some of the stuff that yeah. Callum's always talking about, the lower takeoff angle for, for good DX. But then you can see the top of it is is pretty much circular, which means that you get an equal signal in uh, in every direction. This used to be that uh, most of the time your verticals worked really good for uh, 11 meter. Yeah, well, also unless, a lot of that is like ground wave propagation, you know, if the skip's not running, right? Right. S but, so you yeah, want to make sure the, the polarization. The uh, Yagis yeah, would work good too, I mean. Yeah, for sure. What about a Dupin cyclide? Cyclid. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I don't know either, but Jody's asking. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jody. We're not smart enough to answer that one. No, but it sounds dang I've never cool. heard of that before. The short sob radius or the orc cloud. So we were talking about, I mentioned tripods a minute ago, and um, I've got two of them I want to share. Somebody in the chat mentioned this one. Yep, I got it. Oh, yeah, this that one's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. How, how tall is this thing, Steve? It's, it's not tall. It's, you know, 19, 20 inches, three foot, somewhere in that range. The bottom legs extend, so it gets a little bit longer. Okay. But the how, thing is... How straight it, up and down you set it. Yeah. Let me grab mine. Oh, you got one? Excellent. Yeah, he and I both got one. That's right, you do. That's right. I haven't done so that it, video. It gets on the, super uh, compact. But that joker's yeah. expensive, right? <laughs> I mean, that's that's the thing right there. It gets super compact. They pull it out of its sack. I dropped the, the back floor. So it has a 3 8 24 mount, and it has a SO239 mount. And then you flip these guys over. And that goes Slip right in there. Through. So you could mount a hand straight through that and then sit it on a picnic table or something like that. Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying that just to tweak the primate because I, I know he's gritting his teeth right now. This is the antenna that goes on that tri tripod, right? But this is an MFJ. Similar, the, yes. Yeah, it is. Not is the that, Grundle. Is that what it's called, the Grundle? Gradol. Gradol. Something like that. G Gable. G-A-B-I-L. Gable. Yeah, Gable. But this is and the then those, those legs go out flat, so you also have a very stable base if you're working... Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's what that I like about that ground. antenna is the flatness of it. So you, the, the thing is, the more that you raise the feed point of your vertical, the more that you're going to need to kind of tune and mess with your radials. Radial. Mm -hmm. And um, our buddy, uh, other Andy was asking, if you have radials in your yard for your vertical, you take that down, you put a dipole over it, is it going to perform better? And the answer is yes, because you're going to have yes, a sir. better ground than if you didn't put them down. So that half of the donut that's buried in the ground that Ape was showing you earlier will actually reflect off of that ground plane back into the ionosphere for you. So it's yeah. like doubling your antenna performance. Yeah, so a lot of people just go ahead and, gr and, and ground their ground. I got to get this up mm -hmm. in, the, in the air. This is what I made those radials for is this antenna. Yeah. So this is um, this is the other one I was talking about. This is the one I have. So this extends up. Um, well, this is a different one. This is not the same one. This says maximum length is 55 inches, but this thing I got goes up 15 or 20 feet. Hmm. And this nice. one's says why it's 55 inches. That's only four feet. This thing goes up well to 15. It's more like 20. So, and this was my point. You could use this for the end of your end fed or something like that as well. So you only have to get one, <clears throat> one yeah, end. Tio just took, took off. You, Chuck, you got that question? Cascadia is asking about uh, how do you mount the. Oh, Tio's got it. I was getting a demo. Oh, well, yeah. So for, so for mounting your, your ground radials, I, I use the, the patented KK6 USY method of putting on power pole connectors to little leads 
And then these guys here just connect to what would be the shield of your coax. And there's another, there's another SO239 sized nut there that holds those in place. And then yeah. you just fan these out in all directions from your antenna. And Tio once the and snow goes both... away. Yeah, you'll check. have it out. I was going to say, you yeah. and I both have contacted the guy that makes those and trying to get him to fix it to where you don't have to do that. But uh, he hasn't come up with anything yet. Yeah. We, we explained so they to need him to be... what's going on. It's better if they're electrically connected to the shield of the antenna. Um, but they they can just be sitting underneath the antenna, and that's also helpful. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So here's my ooh, chuck ooh, spike. Ooh. This is just the MFJ 17-foot whip and mounted to the CB window mount. Mm -hmm. Let me go on the, on the big screen here. And let me hide the current comment. So <clears throat> what you would do is on the back of this, you would put this on some sort of spike. Chuck has a really nice... Um, I believe it's a rebar concrete former. It's a concrete um, form. Uh, yeah, so when this is up like that, and then what I did is I made these these bundle radial bundles. This is 17 feet. It's four, four wires, 17 feet each, and I have them going into what I call the bob clip because I got this idea from HOA Ham, who's awesome. And then what I would do is I'd just squeeze this baby like this, connect it, connect it here like that, mm -hmm. And then I can run these out in a fan pattern, but because I have a whole mess of these, I can just keep putting them down in different directions. Um, and that would give me a really nice ground plane for a vertical They're antenna. Onto each other, right? So you could have all those. Yeah. The yeah. And so what you want to make sure is you have continuity from your radials to the, co to the shield of your coaxial cable. Mm -hmm. Somebody had a, uh, another question. Um, oh, look, Bob, uh, Shooter was asking me to do that already. Um, the, yeah, the, the Bob clip is definitely the way to go. But there was another question in here. Yeah. Connect them to the shield of your coax. Yeah. Whatever that happens to be. Like on the Wolf River coils, it's the metal tripod base. Oh, here we go. This is the one I was looking at. Daniel saying, how about an NFED sloper where the lower end is like five feet and the upper end is 30 feet or so? That's what do I was it. Did you answer that one already, Jim? We well, we talked about it, but yeah, Daniel, that's that. I played with it two different ways. Literally, I have a, a tree that I would throw the end of the wire over the radiating wire on an infed half wave, and then I played with the feed point laying on the ground, you know, and just like a sandbag holding it in place, and then I played with it putting it on that tripod that I just showed, and it seemed to work a little better on the ground, laying on the ground. So, so you were saying, um, you absolutely could do that. You were saying you played with it twice and then you went and worked on the antenna. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to. <laughs> so this is another popular way that, that hams do this. You can either get what's called a hitch mount, a receiver mount that goes in the receiver hitch on your truck, or you can get a drive on mount. And these nope. are, they're, they're prevalent for, on Amazon for, for flagpoles. Actually is what the flagpole mount yeah. it is. And then stick whatever pole you have up. The, the, the four-foot military masks, they come in uh, fiberglass or aluminum. Those are really popular. And then just get it up as high in the air as you can get it and get Where on the air you, and make contacts. You get those masks. Uh, I, did, I did that. Go ahead. Do you have, a, do you, are you have, or you have something? You're clipping all that. I mean, your, your voice is going in and out all the time. Jim, yeah. Jim. I, I get those masks. I got a big bag of them on um, eBay, and there's a lot of accessories for them because they're super popular. Um, you can get them at an Army-Navy surplus store. Uh, they, oh, have, yes. they have guy yes. plates that you can add to them. Um, they have a spike that goes in the ground. They have all kinds of stuff you can use for them. You're talking the military ones? Yep. What's cool is you can buy their tripod, kind of like what uh, Jim's been talking about, but it, and, it, and as, you, as you go, it goes through the tripod, you just keep pushing them up and just adding four foot sections to them. Yeah. And that holds it for you. We, we got some really good pictures in the uh, coffee and ham radios channel on our discord, just for the, uh, for the record of S stuff. So I got one coming up, but this is, um, yeah. this looks Jeff like has, has got a picture of his butternut squash. <laughs> his, his, uh, his, his butternut, butternut squash. ground plane. That's DF and so they, he's got a whole mess. Of, he's got a whole mess of radials on there. That looks like a military mast or the MFJ mast. Yeah, that's that's. I believe that's a tilt up mast too. So you can yeah. you can fold it down and work on it. Doesn't um, DX Engineering? They sell those, I think. Yeah, DX yeah. Engineering has a really good section of ground plane ideas. Yeah, they do. 
that's pretty snazzy. And Canada Joe is saying, to be honest, I polls perform way better than verticals for me. It's crazy noticeable. I agree with you. I want to start a holy war. I wouldn't mind a nice vertical like a DX commander. But I did a modeling video. Um, well, I did two modeling videos, one on antennas. We won't talk about the other one. But the antenna one is um, it's called ground planes, uh, or something like that. And what I did is I just went through all the different uh, adding more and more radials to a vertical antenna and how well it worked. And at the end, I showed the dipole performing better in the model. The, um, Depends on who you're the, talking to, though. Well, the thing about it is, is that your dipole Distance. has to be one half wave off the ground, right? If you start pulling it down, then it, go, it gets a little crazy. That's easy for 20 meters or 10 meter dipole. 10 meter dipole, 16 feet, 20 meters around 30, 32 feet. When you get a 40 meter dipole and you got to get that joker 60 feet in the air, that ain't so easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, what I'm talking about though is if you're talking to the same person and your dipole does better. Or your vertical does better it's because of the distance they're away from you most likely because uh, because the the um, sometimes the if you're if you're too close to them the vertical will shoot over them right mm -hmm. because when I talk to the guys right. in San Diego my my doublet works really really good to that for that distance but when I when I when I talk to those guys I hooked my uh, my uh, half square up it shoots over my, and my signal is about two to three s units down but into south america it was two or three high, better i get i get different results so the flex is on a dx commander rapide and then a a nine to one random wire antenna the the random wire is probably 25 feet up and then the repeats just sitting on the ground mm -hmm. and some bands just seem to work a lot i'm i'm getting all sorts of europe and south america on that random wire way more reliable yeah. than even on yeah, the dx the, commander the, the dx commander is an amazing antenna i'm not saying anything different than that um so jeff is saying that he got really good performance out of his dx commander versus the 40 foot off center fed dipole um, <clears throat> some of the best performance I ever got was off an off center fed dipole. Um, but it, it, there's so many different things that impact the way that your antenna is going to yep. perform. Yep. Um, you know, we're proponents of work with what you got and where you got it and go out and have fun. And then as you learn and you want to make incremental improvements, hopefully like I've made adjustments to antennas where it's, where it's made them terrible. And, and, uh, so you always have see to later, Daniel. figure out, see you, Daniel. See you, Daniel. Um, I, I can't put a DX, I guess I could put a DX commander up here, but the radio plane would definitely be an issue for me um, when I start talking about well, like 40 meter. Your yard guy. Yeah. Your yard guy is, uh, yeah. Right, right. Well, plus kids running around and dog running around and all that other stuff. It's just not, it's just not going to happen. And then to me, it's, it's the, putting it together is probably a little bit of a bigger job than I want to be able to do and take down every couple of days you know, to try, try to beat the HOA. It can be a pain in the butt just dealing with the radials because you you really need to get out there and staple them down or else commit to not mowing or weed eating that area for a while. Yeah. It's going to grow over eventually, usually. But. Ed, my random wire is 34 and a half feet. I think that's the length. It's in there somewhere. Yeah, they, there's a chart that has the recommended lengths and stuff like that. Yeah. And, Right around there sound, sounds about right. And right. that's going to change a little bit based off of velocity factor and stuff. So when I use a random wire antenna, I'd cut it for around 35 feet. And then I have another one like 41 and a half feet, something like that. And I think I have a 72 footer. I just cut it and I put it up there. And I, I don't even take an SWR measurement of it or anything like that because I use a tuner with it anyway. Right. Like, like a 10 to 1 and just say, there, there it is. You know, and, and, it, and so that's you what get, I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got, a, I've got an LDG on that on that antenna anyway and it um oh geez it tunes up well i mean it's actually pretty darn resident on on pretty much everything except 80 and one you're saying using the ldg the nine they're nine to one they're nine to one Balin, and then an ldg tuner and well, it, they're really affordable like i think to you you just bought one one like 30 bucks or 35 bucks or something like that for the ldg for the ldg tuner no that was a broken one it, they're usually about 120 which is still a good price yeah oh, i was talking about the ba the balan and the is oh yeah yeah they're like 35 yeah they're not bad at all it's almost cheaper to to buy it than it is to make it yourself yeah it is in there and i've had good luck with it mine's on a fiberglass mast attached to the shop 
and that's where the nine to one is is standing. Now I did put a radial on it. I um, as you should, as I should, and uh, I haven't played with this. I used a piece of Cat Five network wire and just skinned all the the plastic off of both ends and twisted all the copper together. So I have one. I don't know. Probably I don't know. It's got to come down the mast, and then I have it going out into the into the yard. So I don't know. It's probably. 35, 40 feet long, maybe a little longer. And I've thought about doing a couple more, but I don't know that it'd make a whole lot of difference. Honestly, like I told you guys the other day in chat, the last the last couple, three weeks, man, 12 meters on that random wire antenna, yeah, I'm, I'm all day FTA. Uh, I mean, probably 60, 80 contacts is, a day. Is that a nine to one you're using with that? Yeah. Because when you say random wire to me, sometimes I think of the Elecraft. Um, they just do a wire. And a second mm -hmm. wire as your um, your ground, and just tune it, and that works great. That's, yeah, I, I've got tuners on it, but I mean on twelve meters, it's, I mean it's right. there's a tuner in there and it and it's yeah. auto tuned, but I mean it just nails it. And so those transformers really have to do with what your feed point impedance is, and it helps mm -hmm. get you closer to your fifty ohm oh. match, and then your tuner can bring you the rest of the way in, yep. and. Yeah. On my doublet, I found that using balance of, you know, um, one to one, four to one, nine to one didn't really make any difference. The tuner was strong enough to tune it without. So right. it just depends on the tuner. They're actually well, I mean, so something like uh, the, our, the car end fed, right, should have an impedance of about 2,450 ohms. Yep. Which is why we're using a 49 to one balance on man, it. Look at your bath in line, yeah. man. And then, well, yeah, because I remember that one. I oh. can't I think on the nine to one on the random wire. I'm using a nine to one because I think I have around 450 ohms of impedance. I'd have to go check it. I don't remember what it shows up as, but, um, but yeah, that's and that's working great. And that's not anything special. I mean, literally one end of it, the end with the um, with the ballon and the feed point mm -hmm. is attached to a gigaparts fiberglass mast lashed to my shop side and then uh, the other end is thrown over a tree limb about 35 feet away and it works just gangbusters. That's, that's the other thing I'll do a lot of times too with a, with one of those like I have 10 meter I got like three different 10 meter poles and I just a lot of times just throw them leaning away from where I'm putting my infed up into mm -hmm. a tree someplace into the branches and usually I'll try to pull it behind a couple branches and that works good too for getting the antenna up. <clears throat> So um, just wanted just wanted to share that. I'm gonna snake the screen for a second because we we're talking about oh, balance and ununs and all this stuff. Um, uh -oh, that's not what I, that's not what oh. I wanted to show. Let, let me do this. Is that there we like go? Like I'm playing cards with my brother's kids. Right. Look at so all that stuff. This is the um, earliest, earliest kind of the prototype of the of the the Apollo and Fed half wave that uh, that we put together. This is exactly how we built them now for the for the antenna kits. But this is a 49 to one. It has the two turn uh, primary and then it has 14 or uh, was it 12 secondary with a crossover. Yep. Uh, and we this is what we use. And typically we'd mount that lower to the ground. I think there's another question around that. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to come up with a four to one an off center fed design. I'm not gonna say four to one that we can put on to our frames that we already are using right because we mm -hmm. want all of our antennas to be modular and you can mix and match and stuff like that and so this is a one-to-one -one choke so it's really important to use a choke with a four with an off-center fed dipole because your your legs are a different lengths and you're, you're definitely going to get cmc so you have to incorporate a choke in there and we'd want that on the on the um device itself on the when the winder and then we we're using two binocular cores to come up with our this came unsoldered these are um 450 ohm there. resistors that we can use to to kind of figure out what the impedance matching is going to be but just being honest i have had a heck of a time getting it right because this is more like a 2.8 to one as opposed to a four to one and where you feed your dipole antenna center fed it's around 75 ohms and all the way at the ends uh, 2450 so I'm, I'm trying to get this around where this would work which is um probably around a 66 percent uh, anywhere from 66 to probably 75% uh, fed on the, on the dipole. But um, I just thought I'd share since we were talking about all this stuff. I, I 
have not gotten this impedance transformation correct. And I got frustrated and I set these down a few months ago and I haven't touched them, but. You sure wrapped some pretty toroids, boy. <laughs> this one's a little janky, but but uh, thank you. You got some pretty roids. You got some pretty roids there, boy. So now how do I, how do I so go I, back I'm going to throw out something that's, uh, that's related, but may cause ache and consternation. Because I haven't read the full article yet. I caught an article somebody posted in Discord yesterday. And the guy did a bunch of testing with toroids, and he was talking without a crossover. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can. Yep. Just wrapping, you can, you can, can make it that way too. And ditching the crossover, and he had all his wraps basically on one half of the of the coil. All smushed. Um, I mean, yeah, they look. I mean, they look good. They looked as good as yours. Really? Yeah, I, I saw it. I, I read. I read it. Um, and I've seen other folks do that and argue that and. For me, I think you kind of want to get a balance of direction on there. I, I think that what they do is they take two of those and they hook them together and then they feed it through a VNA and they get a, a return loss measurement and divide that by two and that tells you how efficient your balance is. And what they've seen is the balance that are wrapped like that are more efficient than the crossover balance. I, I, Colin, yeah. our, our buddy out in, in uh, he's, he's Scottish, right? Yeah. Um, yep. I it, he's really bright and I really trust the work that he does. And he, he has demonstrated that it's more efficient to do it that way. Then um, why do we do it the way to make it end up right? Yeah. Cause the guy we stole it from, that was his design. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that dude, that was his stuff, man. That guy we stole it from. Yeah. Right. No, there's, there's about a million different ways you can make that transformer and right. They, you know, Colin actually did a whole video series on, you know, different winding methods and whether you spread them out or keep them close together and yeah. actually charted the performance out. And somebody's got some time. And I think while we're talking about NFED half waves and dipoles, I think we have some NFED half wave and dipole information to share with you that might help us keep the lights on. Yeah, hey, we could do that. See if I can just find that. Just leave the lights on. Hi, I'm Chuck with Coffee and Ham Radios, and we'd just like to show you our uh, two antenna kits that we have. We have the Apollo and we have the Mercury. And this is the way it'll come to you if you buy one to two at a time. We can actually get two in a box so you have a friend or you want one of each, you can save on shipping. Okay, this is the Mercury antenna kit. Now it comes with the uh, parts list and on that parts list there's a way to get into the instructions. In the instructions it'll to give you uh, measurements for four bands. They'll get you pretty close, leave it a little bit long, there's plenty of wire and that way you can uh, you can adjust it to the part of the band that you want. And here's all the parts for it. We have a high, high quality toroid, magnet wire, all the parts you need to build this. Both of our kits come with uh, high quality silicone wire. This is the most pliable wire that we could find. It, uh, I actually like winding it straight like this. You can do a figure eight if you want to, but this looks a little bit neater, I think. Now this is the Apollo kit. Same thing, you get a parts list with a way to get to the instructions on how to build it. You get your coffee and ham radio sticker just like in the other package. All your parts. Again, we have to use a, a good toroid that we uh, buy from a reputable dealer. And again, you get your winder, your wire, and, and you also get your Velcro strap. This all comes together. It makes it easier for me. I, I, get, I have three parts all ready to go here. Okay, let me show you something now. Now people ask me all the time, what's different about your antenna? And really a link dipole and an infit half wave, they're all pretty much the same. What makes ours different is the high quality winder. It's, the winder is made with multi-jet fusion out of PA12 nylon, which makes it very strong and durable. I would say this is probably the best winder on the market. At least we think so. We've designed it so that on an infit half wave, everything is a straight line from your antenna wire out to your coax. So it makes it easy to uh, put it up in the field. On the, and we use the same winder for both. So that's just a, a quick look at what we offer and how it comes to you. So if you want one, you can always go to coffeeandhamradios.com and order yours. Awesome. Very smooth, Chuck. Yeah, great great job, Chuck. Over, man. It always gives uh, a teal. always likes the, that one section. I get, all, I get kind laugh. of angry, Chuck. I got, I got to admit, you know. What's that? that part where you just kind of snuck in the, the edit and nobody right. notices? Yeah, it's my favorite right. part. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, is what, what Chuck really did is, is it, he de demonstrated in here. So you have this, the feed of the and then comes in here, and then the top part comes at the top. And that gives us the symmetry and the uniformity that we need for that winder. And yeah. So, and it's, and there's probably, you probably can't tell the difference in your radio, yeah. I'm sure. 
So people upgrade like to coax. That's if all. you have yeah. a problem, upgrade to coax. Yeah. Get better coax. <laughs> Random wire, I did not go burn one, son. That was not nearly long enough. I'd be, I'd be out there hot boxing it like I was in the Air Force. <laughs> right. Hurry up for the boss, Jesus. Um, okay. 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 Well, I hope that that has been inspiring to all y'all to go out and get your antennas erected, <laughs> get them up in the air, make some contacts, and it don't matter that's how right. you do it. It matters that you do it. Right. And that's what we always try to say here is get it in the air. Get it on the air. Both of those we two things. Delightful. I'm not going to make you sit through another commercial. We have delightful coffee and ham. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> Insulated steel. <laughs> what? This is live. This is the commercial. Insulated steel tumblers. Sticker packs, all available on coffeeandhamradios.com and the uh, the Shirt's Cartana coming. Apollo and Someday. the Cartana uh, Mercury. Mercury. Couldn't think of the name. Mercury are out there now. We are working on a couple of other projects, uh, merch that will be on our store as soon as Ape gets around to doing it when he's not on the golf course smoking cigars and drinking corbassi. Yeah, so I got my property Smoothie. of toe shirt, see? Property of the toads, the frogs. That's what I call the yeah. ones. The frogs. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to do it, right, boys? That yeah. will do it. I'm clicking that button. Thank Thanks you very everybody. much. You guys have been I've amazing. Been Slide into our DMs. We'll get your supporters' role fixed. If we don't already have it fixed, much appreciated, everybody. Thank you all very much. Goodbye. Thank you. And 73. And Ryan, Ryan wants to know our ham flavored coffee. I'm thinking bacon flavored. That's ham. <laughs> bacon flavored. That's right. Wawa. Later, all. <laughs>